Hey guys, this is Steve Corian from the PTC community bringing you another ProE Engineer uh, tutorial. And uh, today I want to talk to you about the command called Solidify. And in order to use Solidify, you have to use um, a function called Merge. And what Merge is, Merge basically takes two surfaces and trims them together, sews them together. And the goal is to create uh, a box of surfaces or a closed box of surfaces and then merge them all together and then you solidify that and you can either add it or subtract it because it then becomes a solid. Solidifying your surfaces um, is essentially saying you're creating a solid from that geometry. So today I have two parts. I'm going to show you uh, one how to subtract the material from the part and how to add the material to a part. This first part is a cap that I'm working on and I want to create a pocket inside of here that follows this contour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, I'm going to left click select this surface until it picks up the surface and then I'm going to hold control and select the adjoining surfaces. I'm going to hit Control C, Control V. That's copy and paste. And it copies and pastes your selection as a surface. I'm going to change the color for you guys so you can see that it's, you can see that yellow surface. Okay, had my surfaces hidden. <laughs> okay, so we created our first surface, which is essentially a reference. Um, I could have just offset it, but I'm trying to show you the, the basic walkthrough. I'm going to offset that copy. So I left click, I select it in my tree over here on the left. I go to edit and I go to offset. And I'm going to offset this. 50. Hit enter because that is the thickness of my cap uh, face. So now that I have that surface there, um, I need to make another surface. I want to make the inside shape. That's This is the shape I want to trim to. Now I want to make the inside of my, uh, the inside surface. So I'm going to go to extrude, and up here in extrude, you'll see at the top left there is uh, extrude as a solid, extrude as a surface. Now, you cannot extrude a solid down to this face down here on the bottom left because it'll just cut right through the whole part. It will not trim to the surface because of this this curve. So what you want to do is select extrude as a surface, go to placement and select this bottom face and hit sketch. Now I'm going to use the edge entity tool, the offset edge entity tool. I'm going to select chain and by holding control and selecting that second edge it, it and because they're tangent it went all the way around. So I'm going to hit accept. It wants to know if I want the ends co uh, coincident. Yes. And I'm going to put in a value of 30, minus 30, because the arrow is pointing away. Okay. Now I'm going to hit the green check mark. And I'm going to reverse this. And I want to make sure that I'm going to drag it, free drag it. I just want to make sure that it passes through our, copy, our offset surface. And I'm going to hit OK. Alright, so it's just a surface. We haven't done anything, but you can see that the surface we just extruded and the surface that we offset now pass through each other. And I'm going to make one more copy. 
I'm going to copy this top surface. Just left click it until you get the surface highlighted. Then do Control C, Control V to copy and paste it. And now we have our three surfaces that we need to merge together to make a solid. So when I section this, you can see that there's no solid inside yet, it's just still surfaces. I'm going to leave this sectioned while, I, while we walk through this. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is select your offset and select hold control and select your extrude. You then want to go to edit and you want to go to merge. You'll notice that it will give you two arrows in this case. These are directional arrows for trimming. It's letting you know what do you want to keep, what do you want to get rid of. So this bottom arrow here is saying which half of this surface do I want to keep. Well we want to keep the top so I left click the arrow and it, and it changes the direction. And you'll notice if you change the direction of the arrow it gives you a, a preview of what you're going to get. So if I change this direction you can see it's going to keep this edge but that's not what we want so I keep it so it's inside so it shows us that this is what we're going to be left with. Okay. So when I hit OK, when I hit the green check mark, it essentially just created, it trimmed away all those surfaces. And we just have the inside shape now. Now to, to close this off, we need to take our copy, where we copy the, the bottom surface here. Hold Control and select your merge that you just made. Hit Edit, Merge. It gives you one arrow. It's, it's asking you the same thing. Which part of this top surface do you want to keep? Everything on the inside or everything on the outside of the surface that we're merging it with? We want everything on the inside. So it will trim away this little edge right here, from here to here, all the way around. I'm going to hit the green check mark. Okay. Now, what we have is a surface that is completely closed because we merged it together and when you merge it trims those surfaces. Now what we want to do is we want to create a solid from this and subtract it away. So if you select your very last merge, that's all of this, the three surfaces that you created merged together, merged together. Go okay, so you go to edit, solidify. Now up at the top you'll see it'll fill our surface with volume or it will subtract it. We want to subtract it. So I'm going to select that. And this gives you a preview of what will be left when it subtracts it. Now you'll notice there's an arrow over here and we want to make sure that it's pointing inward because that's the, that's the direction we want the material to be subtracted from. When I hit the green check mark you can now see that that surface has now been filled up with a solid and then subtracted from the inside of my solid model. So if I unsection this, this is now a solid model. I have it translucent so you guys can uh, kind of see the surfaces too. Let me hide my surfaces and make this untranslucent for you. Okay. So now this is a completely solid part. All I did was I just hid my surfaces just now. It makes it easier when you section it. So that's how simple it was to use the, the subtract function function of solidify and we did that by creating surfaces to, to achieve that and it, and it left us with the exact shape that we wanted the only thing I have to do to this part to finish it off is put in a blend and 
and it's done. That's exactly what we wanted. So I'm going to save this. Our first example is out of the way. Let's go to our next example. This is an example of adding material using the merge and the solidify function. And this was probably a little bit easier. Uh, I probably should have started with this. But what we're going to do here is we're going to create a part and we're going to insert it into default. And then we are going to activate it, copy surfaces, merge those surfaces into a solid, and, and get the solid that we want. Now you're probably asking, why do I want to create a solid? This inside pocket right here has a weird shape to it, and I'm going to hide my wires in there from these sensors. And in order to do that, we epoxy that inside so that the wires don't move around from vibration. So I want to mimic um, epoxy inside of this pocket here. But I want to do it quickly. I don't want to take all day trying to copy, you know, trying to figure out how I can extrude this as a solid to get this exact shape. So we can do this with solidify, merge solidify in a couple of minutes or less. You know, so the first thing I want you to do is go to File, New, and create your epoxy part. I call it epoxy. You can call it whatever you want. As soon as you create it, just save it. Then go back to your assembly and insert your blank epoxy part into the default location. Now you're putting it at the default location because the part is empty, there's nothing in it right now, and you're going to be copying surfaces, so it doesn't matter where you made it, you're still going to be copying surfaces off in space somewhere. Um, so this wouldn't be a part that you would include in your assembly, it would just be for uh, visual. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate my epoxy part in my tree and you'll see it grays out my model. I'm going to left click and select the surfaces that are inside of this pocket that I want to fill, that I want to fill up. So I'm just holding control, left mouse clicking all these surfaces. If you accidentally select something you don't want, like an edge, you can select it again, left click select it again while holding control and it will uh, get rid of that selection. So say I didn't want this surface right here, if I, while I'm holding control, if I left click it, it goes away. If I click it again, it comes back. It's that simple. Okay, so now that I, I've let off of control and my left mouse button and because I'm copying surfaces it keeps it highlighted until you go to your next command. So I'm going to hold control C and then I'm going to hold control V and that copies and pastes those surfaces into that part file because it's active. I now open that part file and you'll see it's it's just surfaces, but I want to fill this up. I want to make it up an epoxy part, you know. Um, so what I, I only need one more surface to achieve that because I have to I have to close this top part off with a merge. So the easiest way to do that is to select your extrude tool, go up, make sure you're selecting, have it set to surface. The placement I'm going to define as the side. Now I am going to use the Edge Entity tool and just select these edges. And then I'm going to take the Line tool and I'm going to draw a line so that this surface goes completely by I want it to pass all the way around. I want it to overhang, essentially. 
all the way around my part. So I'm just going to drag it, go to options, change the other side to blind, and hit OK. You can see I just have two surfaces that are touching each other, and I need to trim away this flange, this lip out here. So if you select both of your, your extrude and your copy, and you go to edit, merge, you'll see you have an arrow. If you select inside, you can see that the preview shows that it will leave everything, it'll keep everything on the inside. If I leave this on the outside, it will delete this inside piece, which is, that's not what we want. So I'm going to change the arrow back to the inside and hit the green check mark. Now what we've done is we've taken those, that surface that was on top and we've trimmed it to this shape that we copied. It still surfaces though, it's not a solid yet. I want to section it so you can see it. This is the inside of the part, it's completely hollow, we haven't solidified it yet. So I'm going to go, so make sure you select your merge, your, your merge that you just made, hit edit, and then go down to solidify. Now you'll notice there's no subtract because there's nothing to subtract your shape from, so it only gives you fill volume. Once you hit the green check mark, your part is now solid. So when I go back to my cover, my cap assembly, you can see that this area is completely filled up and, and you can tell by my section view that it's a solid part because it's not hollow inside anymore. And you still have those surfaces on the outside, you know, they're on a layer, so you can always turn that layer off by hiding it and then saving the status. And then let's just say I wanted this to be yellow. Make it transparent so it's like an epoxy. Then I'll save it. I go back to my cap assembly. Maybe yellow wasn't the best choice, huh? <laughs> but my part is now in there and it's let's just change the color to gray. be easier to see. Okay, so now you can see that that epoxy shape, it's, it is a solid. It's inside of my cavity there. And um, that's how you can use just a couple small ways that you can quickly make parts using merge and solidify uh, using uh, complex geometry that would probably take you forever to mimic using solids. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment and rate. If you would like to see another part or another example, please let me know. These parts will also be in my Dropbox for you to download so you can follow along. Dropbox is 100% uh, free. Uh, I've set it up so you don't have to own a Dropbox account. You can just right-click and uh, save the step files in the comments below. And I save them as a step file because I'm on Pro Engineer 5. And if you're on Pro Engineer 2, 3, or 4, you won't be able to read a version 5 file. So I just save them as a step. Um, you can bring them in, import them in. Uh, but if you have any questions, again, feel free to comment and rate. Uh, this is Steve Corin, and I'll see you next time.